So my name is Nathan. I'm the Outreach Officer at Hartford College uh, and I'm talking to two of our law tutors today about how tutorial teaching works in law. Hey, um, hello, I'm Aruna Nair. I'm a law fellow at Hartford and uh, I teach mainly private law subjects. So I teach uh, land and trusts. And I'm uh, Kate Reesley. I'm also uh, a tutor and a uh, fellow in law at Hartford and I teach and research in criminal law medical law and ethics and legal philosophy and I have a bit of a specialism well at the moment anyway in feminist legal theory so I've written quite a bit about abortion ethics um, and I'm working right now on feminist criticisms of free speech protections for pornography um, and the arguments about that. So I think we're going to start with our first question is you know a tutorial is is quite a different teaching experience than people have had in school and uh, it's quite different to lots of other universities as well. So how would you describe um, what a tutorial is and, and how it goes? Sure, well, I would describe a tutorial as ideally student-led. So if you think about lectures, which is the standard way that teaching is delivered at most universities, and we also give lectures in Oxford, in a lecture, the students come and they sit there and essentially the lecturer just beams information at them and they take that information down. In tutorials, ideally, it should actually be the other way around. So the students are the ones who should be doing most of the talking. By the time they come to the tutorial, um, what we expect is that they will have been, done, been doing sorry, a lot of self-learning um, for the past week. So they will have taught themselves all the essential components of the topic we're discussing. They'll have had a think about their own opinions. They've formulated some opinions. And what they then come to do in the tutorial is to tell us what they think about what they've read. Um, so these happen in much smaller groups than lectures. Obviously lectures can be you know, up to 200 people. In tutorials, you're talking about two people, three, four at most. And the students sit there and essentially feed back to us what they've been learning and what they think about what they've been learning. And then what we, we really try to do is just prod them a little bit in their thinking, um, challenge them a little maybe in terms of their views, get them to think on a slightly deeper level, um, and that sort of thing, and get a good discussion going. But we will, for the most part, be led by what they think and what they have done in preparation. So I guess no tutorial is ever the same as another one then? Absolutely not, no. <laughs> You've mentioned um, lectures being there to kind of impart information to people. How do tutorials fit into the, into the Oxford course? Where do they kind of link in with, with lectures? Are you covering the same topics or are you kind of doing different things? Yeah, so, so they, run, they run concomitantly. Um, so every week of term, students will be going to lectures in the subjects they're studying. And at the same time, they'll be having a weekly tutorial in that subject. Um, the tutorials will differ a little bit in scope in that the lectures probably will cover more in terms of breadth. Right? You know, a lot of information will be imparted and a lot of aspects of the subject will be touched on. In tutorials, the emphasis is a lot more on depth. So we try to go a bit deeper on certain aspects of the topics that they've been learning about, focusing on, and try to get them to see maybe some complexities there that they haven't seen before, um, think about you know, their own responses to those complexities in a way that they don't really get the chance to do in lectures. I, I think the, the tutorial teaching is kind of the heart of your teaching experience in, mm -hmm. in Oxford. That's the kind of the mandatory thing that you're doing every term. And then um, the lectures are things that you can choose to attend um, and that you really, you should be attending, um, but you can select the moment at which you want to attend a particular set of lectures that's going on that term. You might do it the term after you've done your tutorials in the subject to kind of brush up on your knowledge. You might do it the term before um, your tutorials are happening in order to get an advanced sort of preview of what you're going to be doing in your tutorials. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's an important part of um, the kind of the degree of control that you have as an Oxford student on your learning experience and that you can you can decide really how to use the lectures um, to supplement the the tutorial teaching that's kind of the heart of how you're, you're learning the subject. Yeah the tutorials are definitely non-negotiable <laughs> that's that's the backbone of the course. Great I think that's interesting how you say the you know the student is kind of in charge of their own learning there um, so I suppose that brings me on to thinking about how you'd expect a student to prepare for a tutorial because uh, you know, you're not just going to go into it with, with nothing prepared. If you're going to have a meaningful conversation, you kind of need to have some kind of prep. So what would you expect people to be doing? 
Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. You know, because of the way tutorials are structured and what they're meant to do, the success of the tutorial completely depends on student preparation. So what that means in practical terms, fundamentally, lots of reading, lots and lots of reading in the run up to the tutorial. So we will now this reading will be directed. The student isn't supposed to just imagine what they should be reading. We will provide them with a reading list for each tutorial, which will happen on a weekly basis. They will go away cover that reading list and um, think about what they've read um, and then we'll usually ask them to produce some kind of piece of work some sort of assignment um, which is usually in the way of a tutorial essay in response to a choice of questions that we give them to answer and that assignment for them will kind of consolidate all of the learning that they've done and create a mechanism for them to feed back to us um, what they've learned and what they've understood and what they think and the tutorial will then probably most of the time focus on those assignments. Yeah and I, you, you talk about a reading list would you you know do you have to go away and read the whole reading list do you have to read every book on there um, or is it more kind of a choice? I mean I think it's quite uh, subject dependent and tutor dependent um, so you might have a reading list where um, there are uh, kind of the core cases, the, the things that are on the law faculty syllabus for the, the law course ultimately that you're going to be examined on at the end. And then you might put on a couple more things that you think they must read for the, for the tutorial with you because that's the conversation that you, you want to have. Mm -hmm. And then a couple more things um, that you want them to read if they have time or if they want to go into more detail on the topic or to come back in, to during the vacation. But I think it, it very much depends on what the subject is and what the way in which you as a tutor uh, prefer to teach. Yeah, I, I tend to split up my reading list into essential reading and further reading. So the essential reading obviously tells the students, you know, what they must not come to the tutorial not having read. Um, that would be kind of the pared down reading list. And then there's a bit more flexibility with the further reading in terms of what perhaps um, catches the student's interest most, right? They will be able to go, go away and go a little bit deeper on elements of the reading list that, um, that more naturally interest them. Great. I wonder if you could talk a bit more about the tutorial itself. So how, you know, how long is it? What are you going to do in there? Are you going to spend most of your time talking about essays or readings or cases or discussion? How, how's it going to work? Well, again, I, I, so I think it's quite subject specific, <laughs> tutor specific. Again, a tutorial would normally be an hour um, and you'd normally be uh, two students with, with, the, with the tutor. Um, the way in which I would normally do it is that I have, uh, there, will, there will be a set of sort of reflective questions on the tutorial, um, on the reading list that I will expect them to have thought about before coming in and then we'll, we'll talk through those. That's the kind of, that's, that's how it tends to start. It provides a little bit of a framework. But as Kate said, it's very student led. You know, so if I, if I get the impression uh, that the students are more interested in one question than in the other, or if they have a particular area of the reading list that didn't quite make sense and they want to really explore that, then, you know, we'd very happily go in that direction. Um, I think it can, a tutorial can involve the tutorial assignment. So, so the, the classic, the traditional Oxford tutorial is that you turn up with your essay, you read it aloud. Mm -hmm. the tutorial partner comments, the tutor comments, and that's the backbone of the discussion. Um, I do that sometimes, but not always. It's not always the, the most useful thing each week, um, but it, it, can be, it can be very good in helping students to hear their own arguments and also for the tutorial partner to see how another person would, would approach the same, the same question. Yeah, I, I would say similarly, like, like Aruna, I think for me, it very much depends on the week, it depends on the topic. So sometimes it might be helpful to have students, you know, read through verbatim their essay and to kind of stop at various points and discuss as a group um, what they might have said, if they want to try and defend it, if there are objections, all in a very friendly way, um, of course. Whereas there may be other topics where, let's say if they're a little bit more technical, um, so in criminal law, let's take, you know, complicity, the rules about complicity, liability are very, very technical. I might want to spend more of that tutorial kind of tracing through um, the bare bones of how this feature of criminal liability is constituted and make sure everybody understands everything. And we might do that, say, by problem questions. So problem questions are where you give the students a set of facts, you know, 
Jim stabs Sarah, then this happens, then that happens. Um, and you talk through how the law would apply to those facts. So that's one particular way of interactive learning that is very different from focusing on essays. When you focus on essays, you'll probably be going a little bit deeper into the theoretical dimensions of the discussion. So to take the criminal law example again, the week where we discuss, say, sexual offences and consent, and what does consent mean, and what is required for genuine consent to have been given, and what is reasonable belief in consent, these are the sorts of questions where I might want to hear more from the students um, about, you know, how do you respond to that case and what the judge made of this in that case? You know, what are your thoughts on this? And try and push them a bit more on, on the theoretical dimensions. I think it, you've made it kind of really clear that a tutorial is an interactive learning experience. You know, it's, a, it's a discussion. Um, so I guess that means, you know, it doesn't always have to be right. You don't always have to get the right answers. No, definitely not. It's very much a base from which to kind of jump off and, and launch a discussion, really. It's, it's, I think of the essay as kind of, it's the entry point. Um, you know, there's only so, so much expertise you can have about a topic after having only spent, you know, four or five days learning about it. So of course, you know, we don't expect anything utterly spectacular. It's just here is now kind of the consummation of what they've been learning for the last few days. And let's use that to have a deeper discussion again. And I think it would be a mistake to think of the tutorial essay mainly as an assessment, you know, where we're looking at how are you doing? Are you, are you passing the course? You know, that's not the, that's not the issue at this stage. Um, the tutorial essay is part of your learning. The process of writing it is the process of you understanding what you read and then that's what you bring to the tutorial. In terms of right answers, there are, there are some areas of law where there are right answers, um, but quite often the kind of the heart of the tutorial discussion will be about areas where you know the answers are contested and so we're not going to be it's not a kind of black and white yes you got it right well done go home kind of argument it's very much how should we think about this what are other ways of thinking about this and ultimately what do you what do you think about it yeah i think that brings brings us nicely onto um a question i've been thinking of which is what what do you think um, a tutorial adds to the kind of the overall learning experience for a student. What do they get out of a tutorial that, that they're not getting out of the other kind of forms of teaching, the other independent study? So going back to what we were saying before, that, you know, being at university is all about self-teaching and self-learning. Um, I mean, you as a student will be doing 80% of the learning just on your own um, or possibly with your course mates. And I think when you learn and you teach yourself with a view to having to, in a few days time, you know, sit in a room with a small group of people and present back what you've learned and formulate some kind of view on it in answer to a particular question, and then maybe defend that view or revise that view in the face of objections and push it even further. I think you learn in a much more intense way. Um, you know, it's like that adage that people say the best way to learn is to teach. I actually think that's true. Um, and I think that to some extent, that's what students are doing every single week when they prepare for tutorials. They're learning in that way where they are preparing to teach something to some other people. Um, and I think it makes them better learners and I think it makes them smarter. What I would add to that is the, is the kind of um, level of kind of personalized attention that you get because of the tutorial system. So there are sort of teaching contexts where you might get a little bit um, lost. Um, if you are in a lecture theater and you don't understand what's going on, um, you can stop the lecturer and ask them a question. You'd be encouraged to do that, but quite often, obviously students don't in a group of 200. Um, whereas in the context of the tutorial, you can't really go through the entire tutorial I was going to say, you can't go through the entire tutorial and hide the fact that you haven't understood something. <laughs> but I don't mean that in a kind of intimidating way. I not mean, in a bad way. But... Not in a bad way. The, the result of the tutorial is that you will have clarified your understanding as much as it can be clarified. Um, because you will have individually talked through exactly what you think, exactly which areas you're not sure about yet, any questions that you have. So it's very intensely personalised. Yeah, I guess you could you could almost you know, it would be easier to kind of drift off somewhere in a lecture, but it's kind of impossible to do that in a tutorial. Right, there's, there's nowhere to hide, and um, and and that sounds scary, but you'd be surprised how quickly you get used to that. 
actually. After the first couple of tutorials, which of course everybody finds intimidating, everyone realizes, well, actually, this is fairly low stakes, this is fairly friendly, but the fact that you're sort of in a situation of exposure um, means that if there's any troubleshooting that has to be done, it gets done. Um, hopefully you build a rapport with your tutors that means you're able to, to tell them, look, I didn't get this. Um, I found this really difficult. Can we talk through that in particular? And that is a personalized learning experience, you know, the, the likes of which it's difficult to get um, in some other places. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, I suppose just to finish, do either of you have um, kind of a favourite thing or something that you think is the best, the best feature of a, of a tutorial or something that you would say to someone who was considering applying to Oxford, considering doing the law um, and maybe isn't sure about, about that kind of teaching um, or about how it works? Is there anything that you would say? For lawyers in particular, um, the tutorial system, because it forces you quite early to make arguments, to think on your feet, uh, to react to other people's opinions. It's kind of an essential part of learning for lawyers. You know, um, part of what it means to be a lawyer is to be able to kind of assimilate a set of uh, claims and then contest them. Think about how they apply in kind of practical situations. And um, I, th I think that's what I would say if you're, if you're worried about the tutorial system and you want to study law, um, you know, sooner or later in your career as a lawyer, you're going to be in a room making an argument uh, about how the law should apply, whether the laws um, should be reformed, that kind of thing. Uh, and I think getting to do that for three years at Oxford uh, in a room with people who, who have spent their careers doing that is, is a really useful training for, for a career as a lawyer in particular. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's, I mean, in that, in that sense, it's a bit like immersion therapy. Um, you know, if you have problems with confidence, you have problems arguing, you know, um, thinking on your feet, um, you know, being at the forefront of something, well, that, that's going to be solved in about three weeks because it will just become the new normal and it will feel regular to you. And you will get the opportunity to practice, you know, reacting in that kind of pressured environment where everything is kind of happening in the moment, yet in a kind of a safe space. Um, to use that phrase, where you know nothing much hangs on it. Um, it's all really kind of for fun and to just um, enhance your your understanding. But I think what as a student you'll realise is that after a certain number of these interactions, you will just be more confident, more erudite, more thoughtful, right? Better able to to suddenly see problems and puzzles and objections um, than you would be before. So I think that goes really strongly in favour of of willingly putting yourself in that situation every week. Fantastic. Thank you both very much. Um, I hope if you if you're um, if you're watching this you you found it interesting and give you a bit of a food for food for thought um, about studying law at Oxford. If you want to find out more you can obviously go to the university website and you can also go to www.hartford.ox.ac.uk forward slash law. Okay thank you both very much indeed. <laughs>